Have you ever wondered how patterns work in Illustrator and how you can create one? If your answer is yes, then you're in the right place. Hi there everyone, my name is Andrei Marius and in this Embaro Task Plus tutorial I will teach you all that you need to know about patterns in Adobe Illustrator. Before we begin this tutorial, make sure to check out Embaro Elements, where with a simple subscription you can get unlimited access to millions of creative digital assets, such as music, graphics, even patterns, photos, fonts, and many more. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Before you start to design your own patterns, you should know that Illustrator comes with a nice set of patterns, which can be easily accessed from the swatches panel. If the swatches panel is not opened, you can easily do it by going to window in the menu bar and select swatches. To get access to your built-in patterns, all you have to do is click this button, go to patterns and here you will find the lists of patterns that come with Illustrator. Let's select this one and Illustrator will open a new panel where you can visualize and select the desired pattern. Keep in mind that using these arrow buttons you can easily navigate to the next or the previous pattern collection. To use one of these patterns, first you need to select it, which will add it to your fill. Select one of these vector shape tools and create a new shape which will be filled with your selected pattern. To add a pattern for an existing shape, you need to select that shape and then click the pattern that you wish to apply for the film or even for the stroke. As you can see, every new pattern that you apply gets added inside the swatches panel, which makes it easier to use it again later. Applying a pattern on a piece of text can be just as easy. Select the type tool from your toolbar and type in your new text, or select a piece of text that you already have, make sure that you have the fill selected, and then click the pattern that you wish to apply. All these built-in patterns can be really useful, but in some cases you might have to create your own pattern. Illustrator comes with a dedicated pattern building tool in the form of the Pattern Options panel. You can easily open this panel by heading over to Window and Pattern Options, and by default your panel should be inactive. In order to use all the functions from this panel, you have to select the artwork that you wish to turn into a pattern, open this flyer menu and go to Make Pattern. This will save your pattern inside the swatches panel and bring up editing mode. As you can see in this mode you have access to all the settings from the pattern options panel and a live preview with your pattern. The original tile keeps the full opacity while the copies are a bit dimmed. Now that your pattern is saved, let's have a closer look at this panel and see how you can edit your pattern. First of all, in this box, you can type in a name for your pattern. From this drop down menu, you will decide the tile type and how the tiles should repeat. When you choose grid, brick by row, or brick by column, your tiles are treated as being rectangular, while when you choose hex by column or hex by row, your tiles are treated as being hexagonal. Let's select one of these brick by tile types, which will give us access to the brick offset function. This setting lets you offset your tiles, and you can choose between 8 different values, which produce different results. If you wish to scale your tile, you can do it by adjusting the values from these two boxes, or by clicking this button, which will activate a bounding box around your tile, and now you can manually adjust your tile. Whenever you increase the size of the tile beyond that of the artwork, Illustrator adds empty space which will increase the spacing between tiles, while when you decrease the values the tiles end up overlapping. To remove any unwanted overlapping and return to the original size values, all you have to do is check this box. 
This other box ensures that moving the artwork will make the tile move as well. Whenever you have this box checked, you can adjust the spacing between your tiles using these two values. Entering negative values will make your tiles overlap, which takes us to these next settings that let you decide which tiles should appear in front when your tiles overlap. Moving to the bottom of this panel, these settings can be used to set the look of your pattern preview. From this menu, you can select the number of copies that should make up your pattern preview. You can increase or decrease the opacity of these copies, or maybe completely disable the dim effect. And finally, with these two boxes, you can turn on and off the visibility for the tile edge or the swatch bounds. The swatch bounds display the portion of the artwork that needs to be repeated in order to create the actual pattern design. It might help you to better understand how patterns work, as it allows you to see exactly where your shapes need to be in order for the tile transition to appear seamless. When you're done editing your pattern, make sure that you click this done button to leave editing mode, and then you can use one of the vector shape tools to create a new shape that's filled with your pattern. Now that you're familiarized with the basic pattern building techniques, let's see how you can create your own wave pattern from scratch. Start by selecting the ellipse tool from your toolbar, click on your artboard to create a 66 pixel circle, remove the straw color and select the fill, change the color to 71, 87 and 94, and then go to object, path and offset path. Set the offset to minus 4 pixels, click OK to create the new shape and change the color to 88, 239 and 255 and go again to Object, Path and Offset Path. Keep the offset set to minus 4 pixels, click OK to create the new shape, grab the eyedropper tool from your toolbar and use it to fill this new shape with this color. Let's continue to use the same technique until we get to the center of the circle. Go again to Object, Path and Offset Path. Keep the offset set to minus 4 pixels. Click OK and fill the new shape with this color. Again, Object, Path and Offset Path and fill the new shape with this color. Again, Offset Path and fill the new shape with this color. Once again, object path and offset path and fill the new shape with this color. One more time, object path and offset path and fill the new shape with this color. And finally, one more time, object path and offset path, but this time set the offset to minus 3 pixels. Click OK, fill this new shape with this color, switch to the move tool so you can select all these circles which will serve as your pattern tile. Let's go to Object, Pattern and Make to save these shapes as a new pattern and open the Pattern Options panel where you can set the settings of your pattern. You can name it Wave Pattern, select Brick by Row for the tile type, lower the width to 62 and the height to 30 pixels, and keep the rest of the settings as they come. If you wish, you can play with these overlap settings to adjust the direction of your pattern. Once you are done, you can click this Done button to save the settings for this new pattern. Select one of these vector shape tools and create a new shape and fill it with your new pattern. Once applied, you might want to scale your pattern and if you try the classic method, you might notice that the pattern does not scale. This happens because of a setting from the general menu that you can easily enable or disable by going to Edit, Preferences and General, check this Transform Pattern Tiles, click OK, and now if you try to scale your shape, you can notice that your pattern scales with the shape. Let's press Ctrl and Z to undo this change. 
And let's try another method that can be used to scale an applied pattern. Go to Object, Transform and Scale. Make sure that you uncheck this box so that the pattern will scale and not the entire object. And then you can play with this value to scale the pattern. Or you can check this box if you are looking for a non-uniform scaling. We don't want that, so let's press the cancel button. And let's try the third method that can be used to scale or even rotate an applied pattern. You need to go to Effect, Distort and Transform and Transform. Play with these sliders to scale your pattern. Make sure that you enter identical values if you are looking for a uniform scaling. Again, uncheck this box to scale the pattern and not the entire object. And you can play with this angle spinner to rotate the pattern as you wish. Click OK to apply this effect. And the nice thing about this technique is that you can always return to the appearance panel where you can find this effect, open it, make some new changes, click OK, and the changes will be applied in an instant. Now that you know how patterns work, feel free to use your imagination and create your own pattern designs. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. If you are looking to learn even more, you can check out some of the other tutorials that Envato Task Plus has to offer. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.